So it's very important to exclude non-tuberculous mycobacteria when a patient first presents with bronchiectasis. So when you're doing the investigation for the underlying cause of bronchiectasis, we think NTM accounts for between five and 10% of cases of bronchiectasis. And so all of those patients, in my view, should be tested at diagnosis to exclude NTM as the underlying cause. The other time that it's very important to check for NTM is in any deteriorating patient. So when patients have a, a worsening of symptoms or a worsening of radiological features in a patient with established bron bronchiectasis, it's very important to exclude NTM by performing sputum cultures or where necessary doing a bronchoscopy. NTM is an important comorbidity and complication and cause of bronchiectasis and it's often missed in clinical practice. I think historically NTM has been an orphan condition. It's a condition that not many people have taken an interest in. Uh, the specialization or the knowledge has been limited to very specialized centers. And so the average pulmonologist has not necessarily been that familiar with the guidelines or has not had that much experience of treating certain NTM species. And so what we see in audits of clinical practice is that people adhere, don't adhere to the guideline recommended antibiotic regimens, they use different treatment durations, uh, and the result is that uh, response rates are not as optimal as we would like to see. I think over the next few years you'll see big improvements in that because of publications like the new British Thoracic Society guidelines and the upcoming ERS ATS guidelines on the management of non-tuberculous mycobacteria and because there's much more awareness now of NTM and a lot more physicians are taking that interest and, and applying the guideline based therapies to their patients. The multidisciplinary team is very important in the management of NTM. If you think about the steps or the patient pathway for the patient with NTM, uh, it, it involves first of all the diagnosis, which requires the respiratory physician, but also uh, the other clinicians involved in management of these patients to recognize NTM. You then need to, di you then need to identify the NTM microbiologically, so we need the microbiologists uh, to be doing the appropriate microbiological tests. We need the radiologists to not just be aware of bronchiectasis and cavities, but also to raise uh, the point with their clinicians, this could be NTM. And then in the actual management, it's very important for us to be familiar with managing the side effects, informing our patients, educating our patients, but our nursing colleagues can help a great deal with that. And it's important to remember uh, 60 to 70% of NTM patients have bronchiectasis, and so the basic management of bronchiectasis, such as physiotherapy, requires other members of the uh, multidisciplinary team. So really, it's very much a team effort if you want to optimally manage NTM lung disease. So if you look at the recent guidelines for the management of NTM lung disease, a lot of those treatment regimens haven't changed in the last 20 or 30 years. So we've been using these uh, drugs that uh, have significant side effects, and we always educate our patients to expect that they will have some toxicity from the treatment. Unfortunately, that means a high proportion of patients aren't able to complete treatment because they can't tolerate up to two years of therapy with the standard regimens. Our response rates for things like mycobacterium abscessus are not as high as we would like them to be. And so we have a number of challenges in NTM. Think about explaining that to a patient, that I'm going to give you these drugs, often a combination of intravenous and oral drugs, perhaps inhaled drugs, and at the end I can't guarantee that that organism is going to be gone. Uh, it's very difficult for the patients to get their head around that. So we really need new drugs for NTM. We need drugs that are better tolerated so that patients have a better quality of life during treatment. And we need drugs that have better response rates so that we can tell the patients, if you, if you stick with these regimens, we have a high confidence that we're gonna get rid of this NTM for you. Uh, so this is a really exciting time for those of us who care for patients with NTM lung disease because we're starting to see much better evidence coming through uh, for some of those established treatments but also new treatment options coming uh, forward which will help us in the future to optimally manage our patients. Just this week um, we've seen the publication in the American Journal of Respiratory uh, and Critical Care Medicine, uh, a randomized controlled trial of inhaled liposomal amikacin which is uh, one, of the, one of the first trials that's shown us 
uh, the ability to convert patients that have refractory mycobacterium avium lung disease uh, greater than, than standard guideline-based care. So that's a, a first step on the road to getting our uh, evidence from the expert management era through to the evidence-based management era. And I hope we see lots more randomized clinical trials in MTM lung disease and lots more new treatment options coming in the next few years.